the evolution of the web. The web just basically uh, as a metaphor for the interface between us and the digital reality. And this interface, call it the web, has evolved through different stages too. So we have the web 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, and, and, and they can be characterized. This is not a hardcore definition, but I'm gonna talk a little bit here and there in order to get you used to the distinction that in, in different people, if you work in a different company and you switch companies or you work, you talk with different experts and non-experts, they might have a different definition. But I think I want to give you a general feel of what that evolution is about because people drop these terms a lot. The way 1.0 was more about passive searching, 2.0 about sharing, it's more social in that aspect. And the 3.0 is more about generating. So generative AI, for example, uh, will be important and of the creation of it. Now, you could also think about it, Web 1.0 was static, 2.0 more dynamic, and 3.0 interactive. There's more interactivity here. And 1.0 was made of pages, 2.0 of applications. Think about social media. Social media, you are at 2.0. And 3.0 is environment. So you can think about virtual reality environments, for example. So that's how you can think about it. Think about a normal web page, 1.0, a social media app, 2.0, and a virtual reality 3.0. Then you are pretty close to what people are talking about, but th they might disagree in the details. So what are some other distinctions you, you find? Well, 1.0, they will say, was on more by organizations. You can think about that's basically a newspaper in digital format. <laughs> basically. Or universities had, had web pages, but that's more like the university bulletin board. Just publish something, what's going on here? And you would, would publish that. And you could read the BBC online. And, and that would be it. So it would be a static page and the organizations would just publish in digital what they did before in, in analog. That's digitization. Now the 2.0 took more advantage of digitalization. And here Facebook is the epitome of the social network, just because it was the first and the biggest social network we've ever created then until date. Two to three out of seven to eight connectable people on planet Earth are actively connected every month through Facebook. And that's a lot. That's a, the biggest social network we ever constructed. And that's a good epitome for, for 2.0. So there are people in there. And 3.0, what's in there? Well, things. So these environments are full of things. They might be artificially intelligent things that have some agency themselves, but it's an internet of things. So that's why they refer to 3.0. And these things can talk to, uh, between each other. Um, they can One machine can say, hey, I need to be charged. And the second machine starts charging them. And, and they do. If you charge something, for example, like the Internet of Things, you might think about it's You can program when you want your self-driving car to charge. Start charging at 1 a.m. and it will start charging. So that's already an Internet of Things. It's the, the car communicating with the electrical outlet. Not so magic, but that's that's where we're already going into this Internet of Things idea that they talk to each other, these, these machines. You can also think about it, the level of interactivity, of immersiveness, actually. So Web 1.0 was more passive reading. 2.0 was social media sharing. Everybody had a web page now it's because Facebook provided a web page for you. So you didn't even have to know HTML. You just, you got your own web page and you could write there. You could write a blog, for example, as well. Blogs are certainly web 2.0. And then the virtual reality, that would be more immersive 3.0. So you can think about it. So it's passive reading, then there's social interaction. And here it's more immersion into also immersion with things. We might interact with, or we are interacting with intelligent things in, uh, in that web 3.0. Now, who creates the meaning? Another distinction might be who creates the meaning. In Web 1.0, it was still pretty much the old paradigm. Meaning was centrally constructed. The Encyclopedia Britannica decided what is it basically the digital publication, the digitization of the Encyclopedia Britannica online. That was that. Now, Wikipedia is very different. It's more like a social media. See, so we socially decide what's the definition of something and what will be Web 3.0. Well, generative AI, well, that's, that's at least the vision, will generate things for us. And when we end out and we cannot agree, then we will talk with generative AI because generative AI has read all of our opinions. So large language models have read all of our opinions and they can say, well, actually, like on average, what you, when you say that, that's actually what you guys mean. And that's pretty impressive. There's no human brain that has read all of our stuff in, in like 
all these whatever 50 terabytes like no human brain has has read that what these large language models have read so the idea is here that meaning then we start to trust these machines that meaning is uh, ai generated through generative ai so that's the paradigm shift centrally by authority by society by machines that learned from us and the last distinction um, is the value so the value in the web 1.0 was still very traditionally industrial it was owned by the companies bbc yahoo aol and so forth then in web 2.0 supposedly it was owned by the community well it was also owned by the social media platform providers the facebooks and youtubes of the world but in theory the community created the value of that it was actually there and, and they created it the, the community created the value maybe didn't own it but it created it and so who will create and own the value in web 3.0 well they are the when it comes to value the battle is still on that has to be socially constructed we could say the machine own it by generative ai maybe that will turn out to be true or individuals own it because there is a technology that would theoretically allow individuals to take ownership of data take ownership of their own data and of the information and that technology is the blockchain technology and we will talk about that in a different lecture now summing up as i said i cannot give you a clear-cut definition of, of what that is as, as much as as we would like that but you can think about it like this so the web 1.0 to search static pages web 2.0 you can think about it to share dynamic apps and web 3.0 you can think about it to create to generate interactive environments now the rest is our responsibility to socially construct web 3.0 and everything that comes afterwards 4.0 5.0 and so forth